In 1805, Lewis and Clark explored the Pacific Northwest. They came actually through here in the sandy area. They went around the Columbia and they saw a river that came out and was fairly flat. They describe it as they tried to venture up the river from the Columbia as being like quicksand. The bottom of it sucked in their feet. They just titled it the Sandy River because of the quicksand. In fact, the city which we're sitting in right now is named after that very river, the city of Sandy. Now, unfortunately for Lewis and Clark, they misnamed it. You see, the Sandy River isn't really that sandy. What they should have named this river is the Lahar River. In this video, we're going to explore Lahars. And we're going to do two things very specifically. We're going to define exactly what is a Lahar, and then we're going to look at the hazards and causes of Lahars. We're going to see why they're so dangerous. And it's quite possible that here in Oregon and here in Sandy, that is our biggest threat, is a Lahar. It isn't Mount Hood erupting. Sort of. We'll come back to it. But let's go back to Lewis and Clark. You see, they didn't have the whole picture. They didn't know everything that happened here in Oregon. You see, if they would have came just 20 years earlier, they would have saw that Mount Hood erupted in about 1782 to 1802. There was a series of eruptions. And that eruption changed the landscape of our Oregon and of our area in, Pacific, in particular. You see, Mount Hood didn't erupt like Mount St. Helens. It wasn't this giant explosion that blew pieces of the mountain off and giant ash deposits. Mount Hood is a composite like Mount St. Helens, but instead it's kind of more stilavis, more felsic. It's almost like peanut butter. It's sticky and doesn't want to explode, explode as much. Instead, it gives off a lot of gases and forms a lot more rocks and domes. So, in this last eruption, 1782, there was an, uh, a dome that was built. Something that was unique, in fact we call it Crater Rock, I should say, is the name of the dome that was built. Something that's different about Mount Hood is that Mount Hood is the home to 12 glaciers. These are permanent ice that sit on top of Mount Hood. And Back in 1782, there probably still were these 12 glaciers. Now, for us today, these glaciers are a big deal. In fact, it allows you to ski on Mount Hood all the year round, because people ski the glaciers. But for this eruption, it makes for a much bigger deal, and it's why really, for Mount Hood erupting, what we have to worry about. Because really what we're going to do is we're going to take ice, heat, and ash, and we're going to mix them together to make a whole lot of trouble. So, we've got Mount Hood with all these glaciers that are sitting on it, these big chunks of water that are frozen. When Mount Hood erupts, heat comes up and it melts these glaciers very quickly. In an eruption, it builds a dome that magma pops out as an explosive eruption, a very small one, and the heat melts these glaciers, liquefies them. But not only is there just heating up, the mountain is also releasing large amounts of ash, and ash is just broken up rock. And that ash flies through the air and mixes with the water that's being immediately liquefied with these glaciers. So we've got an eruption, liquefies the glaciers, and ash meeting it. These mix and form really what is liquid concrete, because it's mixing and it's flowing down the mountain. In fact, they flow extremely quickly. This flow is kind of like a mud flow. In fact, we call it a lahar. A lahar is defined as a volcanic mud flow, and usually is caused by melting glaciers. So Mount Hood has 12 glaciers and can erupt. We can have lahars. So imagine this. You've got this eruption, 1782, and the water is mixing and co making concrete, and it's flowing down Mount Hood, coming down the sides. Well, glaciers weather and erode things to create rivers. And so as this lahar races down the mountain, this liquid concrete that's thick and full of rock, it picks up everything in its path, trees, rocks, an animal, who knows, whatever is there, and carries it down into the rivers. And as it travels down the rivers, it moves very quickly, 20, 30 miles an hour, through the rivers, and it leaves behind this wet, sticky concrete or the trees or whatever is in its way. It clogs up rivers and leaves them with what really is concrete. You see, that's really what happened to the Sandy River. 
The sand that Lewis and Clark were describing were the remains of a lahar. Now, don't get me wrong, there is sand in the Sandy River. I mean, any time you have weathering occurring on rocks, it's going to make sand. But really, most of it is this lahar deposit. When Lewis and Clark stepped in the Sandy River and it came up to their thigh or wherever that stuck in there, they're really stuck in lahar deposits. In fact, if you go between Sandy and Gresham to a, a park called Oxbow Park, you can see the remains of this. In fact, at one of the picnic areas, you sit on a cliff. And if you look down the cliff, you see these tree trunks sticking out. These were trees that were stuck in the lahar. And so as the lahar came down the Sandy River, it trapped these trees there. So really, we should rename the Sandy River to the Lahar River. In fact, welcome to the city of Lahar. Uh, we'll get on the mayor. I don't know if that's going to happen. Well, we did two things in this video. We defined a Lahar as a volcanic mud flow that usually, um, well, we define it as a volcanic mud flow. Then we identified the causes, and we said that's from a volcanic eruption that melts glaciers and causes it to flow down and mix with ash and other pyroclastic materials stuff from volcanoes to make a mud flow that's kind of like liquid concrete. And then we saw some of the hazards. Well, you can see it clogs up rivers. And here in Sandy, where our drinking water comes from a river, that's kind of a big deal. So let me remind you how these videos work. I know I talk really fast, so you can always hit pause and write down what I have, or go back and watch a whole section. If you need to, watch the whole thing again. But always remember to keep moving forward.